The next part is related to non-stationary time series. So now we have looked at stationary time series, mostly stuff like this. And now we're going to look at what happens if things are non-stationary. How do we describe that? Because a lot of things in reality are non-stationary. But if we can make a model that includes that, then we are good to go and use what we've learned so far. So there are many different kinds of non-stationarity. One typical th thing is to have a long-term trend, which you can model in at least two ways. You can say, well, maybe there's a dismissive trend underneath everything, or maybe it's just a process that goes a little bit up all the time on average, but it could do other things as well. The next option is to have a periodic trend. So you have some stochastic variation around some periodic signal. It may be nice as this or not as nice. Or then you may have something that is just a complex mixture of some, in this case you can see it seems like the variance is high in some parts and less in some parts, and then you have other things happening. Now for the latter part here, we may not always be able to find a good model within the scope of this course, but we will cover the other simpler parts. So what we looked at in the previous part was to look at the armor models. Now what we have an I in here as the integrated with some differencing. So basically what we do is that we look at an armor model for a differenced Signal. So we define a new WT as a new stochastic process that is d times differencing on yt. And then we make an armor model, a regular armor model for W. And the differencing operator, just to recap, is 1 minus b, you take that to the d power, and then you're done. Then you can just keep doing that as a trick in picking d, but typically it's either 0, then you are in the plane stationary armor model, or one or two. When d is one, effectively, when you're differencing, you're one time you're modeling the slope of things, differences in slope. So that is what could cover stuff like this. A fixed slope becomes then a mean value that is different from zero. If you go for d equal two, you're, you're modeling the curvature as in the second order derivative. So basically what we have is, if we have a model of this kind, this is the W, then we have the AR part and the moving average part, and regarding stationarity, then you will have, you can say, what comes from the AR part is the usual part, you can make an analysis of that for us on its own, and then you have this part with the d here, it gives you d root on the unit circle. So, again, it depends on what the power of d is, but you will have them distributed around the unit circle. Oh, sorry, you have them, in this case, you have the d root exactly in one, because you can just solve this. The rest comes later because it comes now. To make things a little bit more complicated, we can say, well, you can have the integrated part, the rima, but you can also have a seasonal part. So what we've covered so far is this structure here. Now we cover seasonal part, where we, in general, we use uppercase letters, and then a subscript S to denote which season it is. If you have monthly data, for instance, S will be 12, which indicate that's the desired sequence. Now, the differencing here is, you have the same thing here for the ordinary differencing, and then you have a seasonal differencing operator. That is 1 minus b to the s power, and then you take the whole thing there to the uppercase d power, to difference d times. Typically, again, you won't be differencing in total more than, say, up to two times. Otherwise, you should probably try to find a different class of models to do the job. Now, what we now have is, besides the typical AR part, we can have a seasonal AR model. 
Likewise, we have a moving average part and a seasonal moving average part. So in total, we have just a polynomial with a lot of elements in it. When we're going to look at stationarity, again, we will focus on the combined AR part. We can do it the whole thing here as one polynomial. And if we kind of write it out as a function of set, we have it down here. And if we look at the roots, well, we have the roots for the pure AR part and for the seasonal AR part, they're considered to be stationary. So they are inside the unit circle. Then we have D roots in one, as for the pure Arima case. And then we have a sequence of S roots distributed along the unit cycle. And we have D of each of them. So you have a two roots, then you have one in one and minus one. And if you have four roots, you have them there as well. And then if D is greater than one, then you will have multiplication of each of those. So in total, you have D times S roots that are along the unit circle. Uppercase D, I should underline. So in the case where both lowercase and uppercase D are zero, then we have a stationary process, stationary seasonal process. So we have the AR, non-seasonal and seasonal part, again, and the moving average, non-seasonal and seasonal part. One simple example is the following here, and the first thing is always good to identify which class of model is this. So first of all, say, well, there's only something on the autoregressive side, and we see that the lowest power we have is b to the 12th power, so this is an AR1 model with season 12. We could also write it in the following way. Notice the minus there, that becomes a plus on the other side. You're not surprised by that, but just wanted to mention that because of the notation of having plus on either, having the parameter being positive on either the right-hand side or left-hand side. So this means that yt depend on yt minus 12. Thus, it will also depend on minus t minus 12 minus, uh, minus 24 and so forth. 36. So the autocorrelation function for this one here, how would that look like? Well, basically what we have, if we have the lax k out here, then in lax zero, we get up to one per definition. Then there's nothing, no correlation, no dependence on lag one. We have to go all the way to lag 12. So you have to go out here somewhere to go to like 12, and this is phi, then you go to like 24, you get phi square, 36 you get phi cube, and so forth, all the way to infinity. And if you have a look at example 510, if you want to look into more of these.